Hello everyone, Federico here and I'm going to give the least serious talk in this dev room today, which is creative uses of triggers in MariaDB. Creative or uncommon or maybe even stupid. So actually I'm going to show things that you will rarely need to do, if ever. Um, but at the same time, you know, sometimes in the real world you need to think out of the box and find creative solutions to strange problems because it's the only option you have. And it's good to know what you could do with triggers. Um, and um, maybe you never thought you could do the things I'm going to show. Um, but. Uh, let me say this is not a tutorial about triggers. Um, I will assume you already know how to create a trigger and what you can do with um, regular triggers. Um, if not, you can find wonderful documentation in the MariaDB knowledge base. So let's uh, start with um, a family of use cases which I called artificial slowdown. Um, why would you want to slow down operations on your database? Well, maybe you want to test what happens if queries are slow um, or if queries are subject to many logs. And this is actually not strictly a database problem because, you know, if queries slow down um, the applications that um, are running those queries will have problems too because they will have more active connections. Um, the user connections to the application servers will be queued, uh, which will also affect probably proxies. So this could be a problem for the whole infrastructure. Um, so let's start with the first trigger. Uh, it's very simple, as you can see. And it does something very simple. It generates a random, uh, a random number, which is smaller than one. It multiplies it by 10 to make it bigger. And then it makes MariaDB wait for this number of seconds. Um, or we can do this. We can use the getLock function, which actually acquires something that we could call a user lock. So a lock which is defined by a user. Um, this lock has a name. In this case, the name is um, the ID of a row which we are going to update. Um, but it's actually the ID um, mode for mode is the integral division. So basically we are locking not just a single ID, but we are locking uh, approximately one fourth of the rows in the table. And then we also specify a timeout in this case, uh, one minute. Um, another family of use cases I wanted to show is occasional failures. Again, you can do this for testing. You can test if your application and your infrastructure in general are fault tolerant because, you know, whenever you write something to a database for a lot of reasons, errors can happen. Um, you can use triggers I'm going to show to make a table read-only or at least forbid one class of operations like forbid deletions. Or you can do it just because you're evil. So uh, this trigger uh, makes inserts fail. Okay, you can see it is a before insert trigger. Uh, it uses um, a signal statement, which basically throws an error. 
uh, we specify an SQL state, which is just a generic, uh, I mean, f f um, 45000 is the generic SQL state for unknown errors. Um, we are specifying a basically random MySQL uh, error code, and we are giving a um, string message. Okay. Um, of course, we can also make this happen occasionally on a random basis. So we we added an if here. We are again generating um, a random number which is between zero and one, and we are checking if it is smaller than o dot two. Um, or we can also uh, set the fail variable. Um, this is just a session variable. Uh, you, you can set it, um, as it as it's shown in the last line, okay, with the set instruction. And uh, this will make um, the, the fail happen manually. Okay. Um, this is what you will see if you try to insert a row and that trigger uh, is generating an error. Okay. Um, this is copied from uh, the MariaDB command line. Um, it's worth sp spending some words about transactions because if you use the default storage engine in ODB, it supports transaction. If you have no idea what storage engines are, you are using in ODB. Uh, this means that a single error will make the whole transaction fail. Okay, um, a statement is always in a transaction. If you uh, did um, launch a transaction explicitly, you are still running in a transaction. And uh, if your statement is modifying 100 rows and one of them generates an error, the whole transaction will uh, roll back and none of the rows will be modified. But if you are using another storage engine which doesn't support transactions, like for example memory or IISM or ARIA, um, only the current statement will fail. Uh, so it's interesting to note that if we use an after insert trigger instead of before insert, uh, we will get an error, but the row will be inserted anyway. Uh, this example in the slide shows that, okay? We run an insert, we get an error, but then we run a select and the row is there. Then let's see some other miscellaneous uh, triggers. Um, Connect triggers. Well, I didn't include an example here because it's more clear if uh, I explain it with words, at least I think so. Um, it consists of these steps. You have a regular table, which we call T1, and you create a before insert or before update or before delete trigger. And this trigger has the SQL code um, to reflect the changes to data to another table, which is a copy, which is called T2. But T2 is actually a connect table. So it, it is built with the connect storage engine. Connect, um, as the name says, can connect to a remote server. Uh, it could be a MariaDB remote server, uh, but it could also be any database using uh, ODBC. Um, or it can also access a local data file. So for example, a CSV file or a JSON file or XML file. So um, 
but probably for our use case it's more interesting to reflect the changes to a table to a remote uh, table of course it's something you cannot do if the table is written often but it's something you could consider if you rarely change the rows in the table. Okay, so if it happens once a day, uh, well, probably you're not afraid of uh, performance problems you could have uh, adding this trigger. Um, or we can use, here's another use case, we can use triggers to protect rows, okay? So, um, for example, here we have a before delete trigger, and this trigger checks the row we are going to delete, okay? So, uh, old uh, means just um, the existing row, okay? The existing row we are going to delete has user tape A. In that case, um, we throw an error and say that the row cannot be deleted. Uh, why is this useful? Well, MariaDB has uh, permissions, of course, and you could, for example, forbid a user or forbid all users to delete uh, anything from a certain table. But you cannot set permissions at row level. Okay, uh, if you want to do something like that, you could use triggers to set conditions. And when certain conditions are met, uh, an error is thrown and the deletion is prevented. I did this with delete, but of course you can also do this with inserts and avoid that rows with certain um, information are inserted, or you could um, add a, a trigger on update and avoid that certain existing rows are updated or, uh, or even um, prevent rows from being updated in a certain way, okay? Uh, you could use triggers to replace foreign keys. And uh, I bet you're thinking, why would I do that? Well, because when you want to run an alter table in production, uh, well, nowadays with modern uh, MariaDB versions, uh, a lot of alter tables happen online. So actually, uh, no lock is put on, uh, on the table. So for example, you could uh, add a column almost instantaneously uh, or drop a column almost instantaneously. Um, but certain types of alter tables, like for example, modifying data types or character sets in certain ways are still not online. And you should use certain tools to do those kinds of alter tables, like for example, PT Online Schema Change or Ghost. But those tools don't work well or don't work at all. Well, Ghost doesn't work at all with foreign keys. So what you could do is to drop the foreign keys and replace them with triggers, which basically do the same things, okay? Um, okay, this should be slightly more complicated than this, okay? I, it shouldn't take only one slide, but this is just a very quick talk, so I'm just going to show that this is possible, okay? This, this, this trigger, for example, happens on delete, and when you are trying to delete a row, it basically checks um, if um, a child rose exists somewhere. And if it does, uh, it's going to throw an error. Again, um, if you want to replace all kind of uh, foreign keys, you will probably have to uh, do something more complex than this, but you can do it. 
Um, here I'm going to show how to use triggers to set default values in a complex way. What does it mean? Well, MariaDB supports um, the default close for columns and the default close can contain SQL expressions. Okay, mm, uh, this is a change uh, that happened some years ago. So now you can uh, use, for example, uh, the now function or the user function or any other function as a default value, or, or of course a mathematical expression. Uh, you can also mention other columns in the same table, in the default clause, but you cannot include a query in the default clause, okay? So you cannot reference another, um, another table. If you want to do that, well, um, probably you shouldn't in real life, but if you have a good reason, a very good reason to do so, well, you can use triggers. And it's what I'm showing with this example. Uh, we have a before insert trigger. If the user type is null, so if we are not setting a value, um, then um, a value will be set from the result of a query. Um, we can also um, force a value, okay? So it's not a default value, it's a value that we are forcing, if, even if a different value was specified. Um, it's even simpler, so um, there is not much to explain. I just want to say, well, if the former trigger was a replacement for the default clause, this is more a replacement for for um, generated columns. But again, it's more flexible than generated columns, so you can take values uh, from another table or you can modify the existing value in the row, like in this case, and so on. Um, you can also use triggers to log changes to a table. Uh, honestly, nowadays this is not useful because MariaDB has a wonderful feature which is temporal tables. Um, temporal tables basically store rows but also store all the previous versions of the current rows. Okay, so. Um, for example, uh, if we run an update, certain rows will be modified, but the older versions will still be there and we'll be, uh, we will be able to query them uh, using a certain syntax. Um, if you are using old versions of MariaDB or if, um, I don't know, maybe you have some special needs that temporal tables don't cover somehow, you can use triggers. Um, let me conclude with some final hints. Uh, a couple of practical things. In production, if you have triggers and you want to replace them with a new version, use create or replace trigger. Uh, why? Because uh, if you run drop trigger followed by create trigger um, for a certain short period of time, no trigger will exist. And normally this is not a good thing. Okay, so uh, create or replace solves the problem. Um, and the other advice is um, move triggers logic into stored procedures. Why? Because uh, first of all, you will avoid uh, code duplication. So uh, as you know, we have triggers for uh, the needs for inserts and for updates. And uh, uh, basically there is a risk we have to repeat the same code for three, three cases. And this will not happen if we have the logic written in store procedures. And also you will be able to run these store procedures manually if you need to. 
So this was the last thing. Um, thank you for attending. I hope you enjoyed. Question time.